Hey, speak for yourself, listeners. Before we start the show, I wanted to tell you about our brand new Fox Sports app and website, foxsports.com. Reimagined for the modern sports fan. Go ahead, download the new app now. You don't even have to pause this episode. Every day on the new app and website, you'll see the top stories in sports, plus a rich world of written content, videos, social media, and analytics to give you a 360-degree view of the most important stories of the day. Streaming live TV has never been so easy or elegant. Every Fox Sports game, including all pregame and postgame shows, as well as the televised version of this show, are just one click away. Plus, our exclusive bonus camera innovation allows you to see different perspectives on the action in real time and to change audio feeds all while watching the game telecast. For the extra invested fan, we also go deep with real-time wagering lines, trending prop bets, win probability, and key player projections. So download the new Fox Sports app or visit www.foxsports.com. Now, let's start the show. Look, Be For Yourself presented by Hyundai. Marcel Squally here with my man, Emmanuel Gacho. you clean, brother. Air bowl. Air bowl, baby. It's been a minute. And now we're going to start with Cam Newton. So where's your scarf, Acho? Let's get it going. Who has been showing his workouts on social media, Cam Newton. Here he is throwing passes to his new teammate, Julian Edelman. But Cam also showed up in a recent episode of Odell Beckham Jr.'s YouTube show and still sounded salty that a bunch of other teams have passed on him this offseason. Check this out. Every team at one point had to say, okay, fellas, Cam Newton, what do we think? Uh, pass. You feel me? And that's the disrespect that I feel. So it's not like I'm, 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 I feel vindicated to some degree, but I'm searching for, I'm like, I'm aiming at, I'm going at next all year. So Otto, you got an issue with Cam uh, complaining <laughs> about this? <laughs> I don't, man, I don't. I think it was you who told me, was it Maurice Jones Drew, war number 32? Mm -hmm. Why? Because 32 teams passed 32 on. teams passed on him, yep. so he literally wore a jersey number, something that people see every time he runs down the field, right. something that people buy in replication of him because 32 teams passed on him. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at another quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, interviewed after he gets drafted later than he would have liked in the draft, and they ask, how do you feel about the Niners passing on you? The Niners, remember, had an earlier pick that draft. He said, they said, do you feel bad that the Niners passed on you? He says, not as bad as the Niners are going to feel. Mm. It's motivation. Mm. Let's think about Tom Brady, the great Tom Brady. He posted on IG the six, the, the, the teams that passed on him, again, the, the quarterbacks that were taken before him. It's a motivational tactic. Okay. I'm not tripping when I see quarterbacks and players have to find ways to motivate himself. Cam Newton, dude's won an MVP. Dude has a $100 million contract, has had one in the past. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like, Cam Newton really Gucci when you think about <laughs> it. Like, it's, it's not a lot for Cam Newton to be mad at, mm. but sometimes athletes have to find ways ah. to continuously motivate themselves mm. because you see, Cam, it's not a lot of things that have gone wrong for him until lately. He just got to make sure he got that chip on his shoulder. Well, things went wrong for Cam in Florida, but I'm going to leave that to go. Um, look, here we go. Well, Yes, I have a problem with Cam Newton talking about this and complaining about this. Comes off a little whiny for a guy who I have too much respect go. for, who I love, who I look up, plant my flag on the top of the Cam Newton mountain <laughs> in terms of his greatness. What I didn't tell you about the conversations I had with Maurice Jones-Drew is that he didn't need to wear number 32 to show everyone that he felt slighted. Because I thought you were already fully motivated, Maurice Jones-Drew. I thought you, Emmanuel Acho, when you stepped on that field, was already fully motivated. It sounds great in poem to say, you know what, a couple teams didn't feel me, so now I'm going to go out there and kill everybody. Uh, excuse me, big dog. You weren't going to kill everybody before those teams were slighting you? Weren't you already all in? Yes, you were. This is some stuff that we sell to the fans a lot of times to act like we needed that extra motivation, that 110%. Miss me with that. Here's the thing about what I'm seeing from Cam Newton that maps onto our reality right now. Mm -hmm. Everyone who doesn't feel like they're wanted never wants to blame themselves. They want to always blame someone else. Okay. It's a you issue. It's not a me issue. Cam Newton, you have to understand that every situation in the NFL is not the same. 
I can name 10, 15 teams that they didn't even think about Cam Newton. You know why? Those teams are like the Chiefs. They have Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Oh, it's the Ravens. We got Lamar Jackson. Oh, we're the Texans. We got Deshaun Watson. So, Cam, when you go out there and say, oh, all the teams felt like they had a chance to get Cam Newton and looked at me and said, nah, teams were like, look, you're not going to be our number one, and you're too damn good to be our number two. So half the league didn't even stunt you, didn't even care about you, Cam. The other half, some of those teams had cheap investments. They had guys that they were like, you know, we're going to see how it plays out. Like my Chargers or the Bengals, you know, you grab uh, Joe Burrow. You can look at the Dolphins situation. So my point is, if you listen to what he says, it sounds great. Look at this warrior. Oh, you don't mess with Cam. But when it lands in reality, it just sounds like you like a whiner. But the problem is, Marcellus, some of the greatest of all time, some of the best that have ever played sports, they don't live in reality. Let me talk oh, to you that's about a good point. Uh, remember LeBradford Smith. He was trending on Twitter oh, about go. two months ago. George. LeBradford Smith, uh. because LeBradford lined up against Michael Jordan mm, when he mm. was playing for the Bullets, LeBradford was, and he 30 pieced the bull. 30 <laughs> pieced them boys. And at the end of the game, so the legend tells us. The Michael, lie, you the, mean. The legend. The Michael lie, Jordan, you He mean. told us a lie, but we didn't know at the time. <laughs> oh, okay. He said that LeBradford looked at Jordan and said, nice game, Mike. That's how Michael Jordan reenacts the story. <laughs> or the next day, the next time they matched up, Jordan oh, gives them 36 man. in the first half, 47 on the game. Mm -hmm. Jordan later on goes on to say, well, LeBradford never actually said that. The story was completely made up. Mm. 1996, mm. Bulls playing the Sonics. Michael Jordan sees uh, George Carl at dinner. George Carl allegedly snubs Michael Jordan. Jordan goes on, obviously, to win that series. Right, right. That didn't happen. The greats, they make up things in their head, Marcellus. Is that what they do? To, to keep them sharp. Mm. The greats. Uh. Michael Jordan, one of the greatest of all time. Uh. He completely made up stories. Mm. All Cam Newton is doing is reminding himself of the truth of a situation, okay. which is that teams passed on him. You can't be mad at Cam for okay. not living in reality oh, because some of the greats don't live in reality. He's not whining, sir. Mm. He's just reminding himself of the truth so that he can go out there and remind some others mm -hmm. that he a dog. No, 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 no. This is too damn familiar for me now. I got to take you back before I had okay. this ring on, okay. before I was married. Okay. Okay. I used to be out there having a lot of fun. In the right? streets. In them streets. Okay. Pre-Instagram, though, thank God. Lord, there ain't no receipts. I love <laughs> it. Hallelujah. <laughs> but now I am a married man, right? Mm -hmm. and, and every now and then, my boys could, could get enough energy, get enough guilt to make me go out with them, right? They're like, all right, the four kids going to wake up still, but you're going to be tired. But we going out tonight. And I go out. Mm -hmm. And then that 10 walks up to me. Oh, Miss Beautiful. Oh, ho, ho. she might like the show. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't. She might couldn't see me. It's dark. I don't know. But the point is... They come up to you and they say, hey, hey, and you're looking at like, wow, you are amazing. You are beautiful, but I am married. So you know what? As beautiful as you are, as great as you are, mm -hmm. you don't fit my situation. That sounds like Cam Newton. You shouldn't be mad right now, young lady, because you just don't fit in my situation. But you're going to cop an attitude because you are looking at a married man who's happy and is going to go home? Cam sound you. like somebody walking up to you like, oh, you don't want me? You don't want all of this and all these muscles in this big arm? Hey, bro, <laughs> some situations, they already sitting there and they married. Now let's move on to a guy nobody would pass on, Tyreek Hill, who has turned into one of the most electrifying receivers the league has ever seen so far in his young career. In fact, Hill has been so good he landed the top spot in Chris Sims' wide receiver rank. Mm. Ahead of guys like Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, and DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, my God. Acho, you think Tyreek has earned the number one spot? <laughs> Absolutely. Finish. He's earned the number one spot. Absolutely? Is, he has. Yes? He has. But let me tell you why. <laughs> you said Patrick Mahomes earned his contract, right? Hey, yeah. Right? Yeah, well, he got low ball, but he, yeah, he earned that. He, he ain't do it alone. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes won the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, he did. He ain't do it alone. Patrick Mahomes won MVP, right? Yeah. He ain't do it alone. Oh. So you can't tell me that Tyreek Hill hasn't at least earned that spot. Number one. Number one. But let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Mike Thomas, he a beast. Mike Thomas going to lead the league in catches. He going to get his 13 catches, his 130 yards a game. Julio Jones, he oh. a dog. Unfortunately, plays for a team that ain't win no games as of late. Odell Beckham went healthy. He a dog, too. Uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, he that dude. Mike Evans, he that dude. All mm. these cats. Mm. But 
Mm. Marcellus, you played on defense. Yeah. I played on defense. Linebacker. Let's hunt. I got to coordinate the defensive line and the defensive backs. Let's hunt. You want to know who the hardest dude to prepare for is going to be? Tyreek Hill. Because you can teach somebody how to run routes. Okay. You can get on the jug machine and bomb. Bomb. You can work <laughs> on them hands. But what, you can't coach, sir? You can't coach speed. Mm. And speed kills. So mm. has Tyreek Hill earned that number one position? He has. Am I going to be mad necessarily if somebody who wants to put somebody else up there? I'm not going to go crazy about it. But you can't be mad at a dude who helped his quarterback win the MVP, oh, Super Bowl MVP, oh. NFL MVP, okay. helped his quarterback win the Super Bowl. Mm. Tyree Kill mm. is really the conduit outside of Mahomes to the best offense we've seen wow. as of late. Wow. I, I don't think we saw the same rankings. Chris Sims should have ranked him number one in the fastest wide receiver uh, rankings. Because that's the only thing you that Tyreek Hill, another player I fully respect, is the best at. Everything else that comes with that position, which you will sum up and say who's the best, it's not even close. It's not Tyreek Hill. Here we go. Since you want to say he's a conduit to mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes, right? Okay. Let me just give you what his rankings were last year, just, just for your knowledge. Please. 42nd in targets. Mm, okay, that's not killing you. They ain't throwing the ball a lot. How about 36? Six in receptions. Oh, you didn't catch that many. How about 31st in receiving yards? You write that one down? <laughs> How about 20th in yards per reception? Wait a minute. The fastest guy that we can't defend all of... Yeah, you better Google that one. You don't trust me. 20th in yards per reception. You're the fastest dude on the field. And then 13th, not even top 10, in touchdown receptions. And you trying to tell me he's number one? He's not even top 10 in anything. Now, I want you to push back because I got more ammo. Are you going to push back right now or you yeah, want some more thing, to see? Bro. Here, here, here's what's crazy. What's crazy? Nothing was what's top crazy? 10. You just came at me with a whole bunch of stats to undermine Tyree Kill instead of praising his other cats. So you telling me it's Tyree Kill's fault that Travis Kelsey exists? Ooh. You telling me Ooh. it's Tyree Kill's fault that Miko Hardman exists? You're telling me... It's Tyree Kill's fault to Sammy Watkins. That, <clears throat> with a straight face, yeah, you trying to tell yeah, me yeah. Tyree Kill doesn't have that many targets and that's undermining oh, Tyree Kill's greatness. Oh, oh, it's not oh, Tyree Kill's fault oh, oh, that, 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 uh, that, that he has oh, Killer Trav. Oh, that's not his fault. Oh, 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 oh they had to share the ball. Let You're let going me, to share let me, ball let argument. Let me, let me talk to you about Tyree Kill. Ooh. Big time players, they make big time plays. And what, sir? Something about situations. In big games. time games. I want to hear about that. Let's, oh, don't. Then let me just show you the Super Bowl. The game is on the line. Tyreek Hill is third and 17. Patrick Mahomes, he needs to dial one up, Marcellus. And what does he do? He goes to the only player who could have made the only play at that point in time. And I'm talking in the whole league. He threw a Tyree punt. Kill. He threw a punt. Well, who? Somebody <laughs> had to get down there to catch it. Yeah, ain't lying so there. my <laughs> point being, Tyreek Hill does things that other players don't even have the ability to do. So you can put him at that number one spot. Oh, he does things that other players don't, don't have, have the ability. ability to do. Don't have the ability. But he doesn't do things that other players produce. He doesn't do the same. I had, when I give you a full screen, you know you're in trouble. Got me a full screen. Uh -uh. I wonder if Tyreek Hill in his first 59 career games, since that's all he's played, is number one in any of these categories. Oh, no. There go, there go them names again that were lower on Chris Sims' rankings. Odell, Julio Jones, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, all better than Tyreek Hill by the same amount of games played. So first you told me it was a share the ball argument, uh -huh. and now it's what, uh -huh. share the NFL experience argument? Uh -huh. You got anything else to say? Cause we can move on. So how, how many Super Bowls them guys have, bro? Antonio Brown, Odell, how many They how many took Super the full Bowls, screen away, oh, so we got to move on. You can bring the full screen back. Don't bring it. Odell, how many Super Bowls he got? <laughs> none. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mike Evans, none. <laughs> okay, Antonio Brown, not even in the league. You see, he got the NFL by his name. He don't even got the logo by his name. Oh, DeAndre Hopper, <laughs> none. So, and I'm not going to say it's just, oh. actually, it was oh. Tyree Kill's fault. Oh. And he does deserve the credit for them winning that Super Bowl because when the game turned, it was because of Tyree Kill. Now, sir, do what you need to do if you need to take us to All break. I know is you went with your quarterback argument, which is it's all about winning the Super Bowl. Put it on a receiver argument that was about he's the best receiver to in the game. Do what you have to do to win the <laughs> argument. Oh, my God. He's the fastest. That's about it. But coming up, now that Tom Brady is in town, who's the oldest, one buck star says they got the best offense in the league. We'll tell you if he's getting way ahead of himself. Next, speak for yourself, presented by Hyundai. What's the number one sign of a bad home security system? 
a home security system that's so complicated you never use it. This is exactly the type of security system Simply Safe has spent a decade fighting against. They believe that Simple is safer, and it's exactly why Simply Safe is the home security for right now, when feeling safe at home has never been more important. Simply Safe was designed to be easy to use while protecting your home 24 7. Order online with the click of a button, open the box, place the sensors, plug it in, and your home is protected around the clock. No technician or salesperson has to come and disrupt your house. You don't need to pay any outrageous monthly fees or sign a two year contract. Simply Safe was named Best Overall Home Security of 2020 by US News and World Report. And their 24 7 professional monitoring and emergency dispatch starts at 50 cents a day. Head to simplysafe.com slash speak and get free shipping and a 60 day money back guarantee. That's simplysafe.com slash speak to make sure they know that our show sent you. Woo! Antonio Brown, the football player, can't pity him. Can't pity him. He made his bed, he must lie in it. Do I feel bad for Antonio Brown, the person? Absolutely. We've been so quick to criticize AB, so quick to clown AB. Nobody's called and said, wait a second, is AB good? Yeah. You feel me? What you just said, summed up, sounds like conditional love. When you have a few slip-ups and mishaps, we're gonna try and sweep them under the rug. But when you finally fall down and you need us to help you get up, we're not there for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't like about the game. So as long as he's still one of the NFL's kids, sons, one of the fraternity, a little unconditional love could go a long way. Hey. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's move to Tampa Bay, where the arrival of Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski has some people thinking Super Bowl. The Bucs already had a ton of talent on offense, but now <laughs> tight end O.J. Howard says adding Brady and Gronk makes them one of the best offenses in the league, if not the best. Joined now by that dude, NFL analyst LeVar Arrington. Mm -hmm. Lamar Sellis, yes. I'm going to start with you, bro. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it crazy for O.J. Howard to say this? Not crazy at all. He's dead on. Look at this offense. If you talk about replacing Jameis Winston, who went out there and did his job, even though he turned the ball over entirely too much? But you replace him with Tom Brady, the GOAT, and all of a sudden you get the same reward, if not more, but none of the risk in terms of turning the ball over. Then you start naming off all of these talents on this roster. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski, O.J. Howard. Ronald Jones, they drafted an alignment in the first round on top of having already a top 10 pass-blocking offensive line. You add all that up, then you say Byron Leftwich called the plays with Bruce Arians right there as your head coach. Of course this team is going to go out there and perform at a high level, maybe the best offense we're going to see in the league. Don't forget, last year, first in passing yards, third in total yards, and fourth in scoring. And here comes the GOAT. I'm with you, OJ. I believe y'all going to ball out. Absolutely, unequivocally, no, 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 and one more no for good measure. And, and here's the thing, right? I know young Acho will come at, after me with a little baseball bat and try to knock it out of the park. But I'm coming at, but I'm coming for you right now, Marcellus, and, and I want to I want to direct my, my argument point this way. Yeah. You're sitting there talking about the upgrade from Jameis to Tom Brady, the GOAT. But if I recall correctly, all of the conversations we've had in months past and shows past, you are the very one who is pointing out the picture as to a declining Tom Brady and why it made sense for him not to go back to New England based upon the fact that he is not a productive quarterback like he once was. That's first and foremost. Oh, okay. So to think, hold on, so to think that he's going to go to Tampa Bay and name all of these weapons is the reasons why he's going to be this amazing, rejuvenated quarterback that mm. makes them the mm. number one mm. offense in the league. I don't buy that. All right. Now, here's my next point. And this is a, an, a very critical point to what's going on here. You're bringing in two guys and, and Tom Brady and, and Rob Gronkowski, who have now become, in essence, the de facto stars and the leaders of this team. There are two things that are going to become very apparent. One is when you appoint a leader instead of earning being a leader, mm. you're going to deal with certain things like resentment. You're going to deal with certain things like regret. Uh, the second thing you're going to deal <laughs> with, you're going to deal with uh, complications in terms of 
what the relationships could be. You mentioned what they did with Jameis Winston. Well, imagine if they had a tough spot, a tough stretch during the course of the year. You're looking at an older Tom Brady. You're looking at a coming out of retirement who's all, almost more for show than for real, real game time playing right now in Gronkowski. What are you going to do when you start losing those games? What are you going to do when you don't start seeing all of those statistical categories jumping off of the screen at you like they did? We can talk about how Jameis Winston didn't turn or turned the ball over, was a turnover machine, but he also put up a ton of yards. He also threw for the most yards in the National Football League. I think we find out how much better Jameis Winston was than what we thought he was by seeing what takes place with Tom Brady this upcoming season. Mm, somebody woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Let's go. Let's uh, go to war right now. Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. You, you cannot sit there and say a decline in Tom Brady is worse than a Jameis Winston as is because where Tom Brady is descending from are greater heights than Jameis Winston has ever accomplished. That's true. So even coming down, if you've seen a plane land, it's still going to be higher than the helicopter that is Jameis Winston. <laughs> That's where I'm going with that. <laughs> For Part how two. long? And the reason why Tom long? Brady was in decline is because he didn't have the weapons. His tight end retired. His best receiver was Julian Edelman coming off a PED suspension at the age of, what, 35? Hold on. Is Julian Edelman the same as Chris Godwin? Mm. Ooh. Mm. Is Julian Edelman the same as Mike Evans? Ooh. Is Nikhil Harry, Harry the same as any of those guys? Ooh. So if you're going to talk about how this plane is going to ascend once again, Tom Brady, the GOAT, it's because he's surrounded by greater pieces. It's just that simple. Acho, Lamar, I just got to ask you, if not the Bucks, sir, then who? Who, who, who is the best offense oh. in the league? Oh, there's plenty of, of options. Just give me one. Just give, one. give me one. Hey, what people you say, plenty. Say, what? Are Just we give me sneezing one. at, are we, y'all going to let me talk or y'all going to be trying to gang up uh, on me and keep both. me from little... saying something? <laughs> we here. I ain't afraid of y'all. I, I ain't afraid. <laughs> hey, listen, there's a team out in Kansas City that's pretty good. Mm. All right. They got a pretty good quarterback. Mm. There's a team in Baltimore, Maryland. It's a pretty good team. Uh, you know, they I'm, ain't got receivers. I'm gonna be willing. I'll be willing. What? The receivers don't they, catch the ball out there yet. You Not can yet. make they it. Coming. <laughs> you can make it work with that team they have oh, out yeah. there. Y'all like being name brand. You know, we as a people <laughs> love our our labels. Like that, we don't need to be name brand with everybody. They're that running teams. That's Ravens what we're saying. Offense, <laughs> that Ravens offense is is explosive. As a matter yeah. of fact, yeah. I think they were rated higher than the Chiefs last year. Now here's another name, another team that I'll throw out there at you. Uh, there's this team called the New Wing, or, or excuse me, the the New Orleans Saints oh. that that are pretty good. Yeah, well, now, the last I'm one. not throwing New England out let there, me, but I can keep going. Let me Arizona. make something clear. Let me make what? something clear, Lamar, because some of these names you threw out there, I don't mind them. I don't. I really okay. don't. You're an intelligent person who most of the thank time you. makes some intelligent thoughts. Yeah, but however, well, thank you. you've All overlooked right, okay. some things. When you look at the look at the Bucks offense, and you know this better than anybody, being a top tier linebacker for several, several, several years. With the Bucks offense, they got versatility. Because when you got the tight end position, you got to do Gronk, mm. you got to do OJ, mm. you got to do Bray. Then you look out there at receiver, you got Mike Evans, mm. you got Chris Godwin. Mm. But for me, it's not even about all that. No. Let me tell you what it's about. Say. About 2012, my dad. He, he bought a brand new range, right? I don't know how. Oh, he bought a brand two new Two kids range, in the league right? is how. That's and, and, how he so did it. The problem, though, hey, is man. I, I got into the car and I looked at the dash and I was like, I don't know how to work all these gadgets. But my dad mm. got into the car and because he knew how to work all these gadgets, he drove the car as well as the car could be driven. See, Tom Brady is stepping into the car of the Bucks offense, and he's looking at all these gadgets. And because he's the perfect driver, then that offense is going to drive as efficiently uh, as any offense uh, in the NFL you know, because they got that driver. So you're talking about all these teams that don't have the same on, Marcella, gadgets, stop sir. That. You better swing that way. You better come out and play that way. This show don't play that. That's, <laughs> and, and, and let's be clear here. I, I'm glad that that was your perception of your dad. It's like that whole deal where once once Dale Earnhardt got into that that uh, Range Rover, then you realized how much your dad didn't know about. It. <laughs> so here's here's the reality. I love the I love the fact that you love your daddy. Like, I don't want to take anything away for your your affinity for what you have for your daddy. And I am super intelligent, and that's why I'm gonna pick you apart. Please, right now. please. Okay. So so here's what so here's where your your argument falls on flat mm -hmm. on its face. Mm -hmm. 
while you're sitting there saying that you're going to drive this this car and this automobile the way that it's supposed to be driven, you know, there's this thing that comes to mind, and you mentioned it, you touched on it, the familiarity with that dashboard, the familiarity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of being able to operate it. How do you expect Tom Brady to come in there and be as familiar as he possibly needs to be with the personnel that he's coming in there to play with? I think sometimes we live in such a quick world, a, a, a very quick in terms of solution and 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 what what our end is, the ultimate end is, we're fast food society. Mm. It takes time. Yeah. It takes time to adjust. It takes time to build continuity. And and the one thing that I'm looking at here is, you know, I think back to 2011. The best example I could give to destroy your argument right now is 2011. Something took place in the place where you finished your career. It's Philadelphia. Mm. A guy by the name of Vince Young called his team the dream team. Mm -hmm. We're the it was dream a team. It was a mistake. All right, you <laughs> want to throw out all of the names that were on that team? You had a young LaShawn McCoy. Mm -hmm. You had a Ronnie Brown in the backfield. You had Jeremy Macklin. You had... Deshaun Jackson, you had Selleck at tight end, you had Mike Vick as the starter. This eerily is similar to the team we're talking about right now. And I'm going to tell you why. You have a ton of talent, but not a lot of familiarity. You know what that team did? You know how they performed? Oh, he An know. Eight and eight season. They did <laughs> not win. The, they did not even win their division. And oh, by the way, they missed the playoffs. With all of them weapons, all that stuff on your dashboard, with them nice tires and wheels, you had all that handle, all that acceleration, and ain't beat nothing. First Ooh. off, first off, Lamar, the word is similar, not similar. Okay, first, <laughs> okay, first okay, off, okay. there's no Y in okay. it. So we're gonna start there. I'm from around the way, so I'll put similar out there, and, and a lot but, of people gonna respect that. But secondly, that game. The, the, only, the, the only retort I have, Lavar, uh -oh. is, is this. Okay. You can't question the greatest quarterback of all time that and his really ability can. to adjust and assimilate he's into still being New England if he is he's been, still being New England he's been an NFL goat for 20 years now he's you're still talking being about New England. Tom, you're talking about Tom Brady as if he's a high school quarterback you're talking about Tom Brady as if he has the intellect of a rookie okay mm. coach, let's put some respect on Tom Brady's name mm. 46-year-old T.O. looks pretty impressive in his race against you handle, similar. You handle that double team, though, Lamar. I'll tell you it's that. Similar. <laughs> hey, it's not. similar to me. It's not. I'm, I'm done here. Coming up, 46-year-old T.O. He looked impressive in his race against Tyree Kill. We'll tell you what it could mean for the Hall of Famer's future. Man. Hey, think for yourself, presented by Hunt. He actually scratched us up a little bit. <laughs> Talking about ED isn't easy. Usually, we just brush it off or blame ourselves, saying things like, I lost my mojo, or we avoid it altogether with excuses like, I had a long day at work, or sorry, honey, just not feeling it. But with Roman, it is easy to talk about it with a real doctor who can prescribe real medication. It's simple, safe, and totally discreet. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. The doctor will work with you to find the best treatment plan possible. If medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com speak and complete an online visit. ED used to be tough to tackle, but now there's Roman. Complete an online visit today to connect with a doctor and take care of it. Just go to GetRoman.com slash speak to get a free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash speak for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash speak. Welcome back to Speak for Yourself, presented by Hyundai. Let's move to Terrell Owens, who just went head-to-head -head in the 40-yard dash with Tyreek Hill. Clearly, the 46-year-old didn't win, but it was a lot closer than you might think. Afterward, T.O. had a message for his old coach from his days in Philly. Andy Reid, trust me, if you get in trouble now, <laughs> if you get in trouble, I'm letting you know right now, I'm social distancing. Tell him. I got my mask on. Tell him. But if you ready, it's going to be mask off. Bring me to Kansas City now. You know you know me. Rick Burkholder, y'all know y'all know me now. Let's go, Kansas City Chiefs. Congratulations. LeVar Arrington, the slugger, is back with us. I'll tell you, I'm going to start with you. 
T.O. hasn't played in a decade, mm -hmm. but you think he could start for an NFL team right now? Man, the short answer is absolutely not. That's the short answer. But then, Marcellus, I started mm -hmm. digging a little deep. You better dig. I started digging a little deep. And I said, <laughs> he couldn't start. He, he's not going nowhere near the Chiefs. But his former team, the Philadelphia Eagles, remember the end of last season? Where we are. Remember when Philadelphia, they rolled out the starting receiver lineup of Deontay Burnett, who started the year at practice squad with the 49ers, got picked up in December. Okay. They rolled out J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, who all the Philly fans were just crucifying. But most importantly, who led the Eagles at the receiver position last year? Mm. A guy by the name of Greg <laughs> Ward led that team in the last month. Greg Ward played quarterback. Yes, quarterback in college. Mm. Greg Ward, he started 2019 in the AAF. Greg Ward was on practice squad until December 12th for the Eagles and came in and gave the Eagles a little bit of juice. No shot. So, T.O., Kansas City, nah. But T.O. might be able to sneak into a place like, <laughs> dare I say, the Eagles? Oh, it's not just the Eagles. First of all, let me answer the, the question correctly. Yes, he could play in the NFL. Yes, he could start for multiple teams. We're not okay. even going to just talk about the Eagles. You ain't got to put him in a place where he has to be familiar. He's been there before, so you can welcome the old man into the building. Nah, let's take him somewhere he's never been. How about the Colts? <laughs> With Zach Pascal last year as their top wide receiver. How about the Giants with Darius Slayton as their top wide receiver last year? These guys are not close to 1,000 yards. How about the Jets? Jamison Crowder last year. T.O., in any NFL game, you've seen him come out three wides, four wides, sometimes five wides, depends on the offense. You trying to tell me that Terrell Owens couldn't be one of those guys when we just saw him go out there and only lose to Cheetah by a step and a half at the age of 46? Now, for all y'all who don't know who Cheetah is, I got a couple of clips to show you mm. about where Terrell Owens will be on the football field if you see Cheetah out there doing what he just did to him. Look at this play right here. No Mahomes, no problem. Damian Williams, 91-yard touchdown run. Damian Williams can run. Uh, Tyreek Hill can run even faster to the point where he catching up. Give him a little pat on the butt. Hey, pat on the butt. Terrell Owens would have been right there, too. Let's look at this play. Damian Williams looks pinned in. Nope, not again. Uh-uh. Now, watch him get oh. sucked up by somebody none other than Tyreek Hill. Guess who would do that? T.O. could do the same thing. NFL, y'all slipped on my boy for a decade. It's time to put T.O. back in the league. He's ready. First off, that's so disrespectful if a teammate does that to you. <laughs> that's that. Tap it, what a Second booty. of all, shots out to T.O. and his body because that I have body envy going on right now. I, at 46, for him to look like that, like shots out to you, T.O. Yeah, real talk. Um, and, and listen, when you're looking at it, of course he could make it onto a team and be a starter. And the one thing we're not talking about is T.O.'s skill level, Ooh. right? We're not, we're not, we're not getting, we're not going to look at T.O. and say T.O. is going to be the highlights that we're showing him. You have to be careful in looking at, again, and I said this to y'all about Cam. I'm saying that to y'all in the last segment about Tom Brady. You have to be careful to look at what was, what we did see, what it, what it happened to be that made us feel the way that we felt about that player. That's not going to be the T.O. that you see. But we're in a very, very flag football touch two-hand touch league right now. So it's all about skill and if your body can handle it. T.O.'s body could probably handle a limited workload at a starting position and run routes well enough to be a possessional, a situational type of starting receiver. At best, a decoy because you're going to have to pay attention to him. That's football talk. Yeah. Now, from a sentimental side, if I'm looking at this situation and I say, all right, if it's somebody like Marcellus Wiley, and I'm basing, if I'm going to say, can Marcellus Wiley start in the National Football League based off of him racing and doing some different things? I got tape. And, and <laughs> oh, I, I come on, man. <laughs> and I really want y'all to understand <laughs> that when looking, this puts it in the proper perspective. Oh, man. His, his oh. daughter is, is, is a critically acclaimed, well, well celebrated track and field star. So we'll give you a break on that one. Oh. But your baby boy <laughs> then coming. ran off to the side, ran off over here, and he literally Tyreek Hill you and then ran back. 
<laughs> now, if that doesn't put it in the proper perspective as to what you just saw Tyreek Hill and T.O. do out there on that field, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. If the body is willing and able like hey, T.O., yes. he definitely would have an opportunity to get Yo, on the starting job with the team. I'm so mad you just turned Tyreek Hill into a verb. He Tyreek <laughs> yeah. killed you. Uh, yes. But here's my thing, man. Yes. I'm usually, y'all usually clown me as the youngest on the show for having my young person bias. Right now, y'all have old man's bias. Let's be honest. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. is 46. Oh, Marcellus, really you up there. I'm not going to age you, but you up there around the same so age. Okay. LeVar, <laughs> you just had a birthday two weeks ago, so yeah. you up there, too. Yeah. Y'all got yeah. that old man's bias. <laughs> T.O. ain't lasting no game. Like, we shouldn't even take this as a serious subject matter. Why? Wow, T.O. ain't man. lasting no real game. Dude looks good. But I look good in a suit. Marcellus, my dog filling out these suits. Traps is popping. Biceps might be popping. They not going to hold up. Okay, they, <laughs> they deflate very quickly with age. So yeah. Keo may look the part and run the part. But let's call a spade a spade, okay? Mm. He, he about one, 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 one dig route away <laughs> from being dug out, okay? He, he one dig route dig away out from, six being, feet. from being dug six out. Six feet of dirt. He's got a six feet dig. Hey, he ain't lied about that recovery and how no one chooses football. <laughs> football chooses you. And it has left T.O.'s body. But... He looks like he could do it. He looks the part, certainly. I'm rooting for this because I've always said T.O. is the best wide receiver I've ever seen. And I understand what y'all going to throw back at me. Randy Moss and Jerry Rice. No, 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 no. Our defensive coordinator used to tell us, and he, T.O., we beat him in 2002. We had a stellar defense. But T.O. caught two touchdowns from Jeff Garcia, one for 76 yards, one for 32 yards, turned us as defenders into fans. Coach always said two things about T.O., don't let him catch the ball. He runs every route perfectly. But if he does catch the ball, beware. He runs angry. And T.O., yes, when he does. catches the ball, he going to hold Man. it with one hand, and the other one is looking for victims. And he yes. will go out there and murder the defense. That's what I'm on with you with I that I got to give him his props. I hope this comes to life. I know it won't. But T.O., you're the best I've ever seen do it. Coming up... LeBron's made it clear he wants the MVP award, and now Magic Johnson says the king has earned it. We'll tell you what we think next. Speak for yourself, presented by Hyundai. Though some of our other favorite sports may be on hold, horse racing is still running strong, with live coverage of top-tier races on FS1 and FS2 throughout July. You can enjoy horse racing from top tracks across the country all month long. Go to americasbestracing.net slash strong to learn more. Let's move now to the NBA where the season is about to get started and the basketball world is debating this year's MVP. LeBron James has already been openly campaigning for the award this week, and now the man who brought him to Los Angeles, Magic Johnson, says he should get it, <laughs> tweeting, quote, LeBron James is definitely the MVP this season. He is almost averaging a triple-double with 25 points, 10 assists, and basically eight boards a game. His defense has been amazing, and there is no better leader in sports. We're joined now by NBA analyst Slick Rick, my guy. But Marcellus, I'm going to start with you. Should LeBron win MVP this season? Hell no. No, sir. And let me tell you why. Because the MVP from last season had a better season this year. And LeBron James last year was not an MVP candidate. And in some categories, he regressed. So how did he close the gap on the MVP? You guys can see right now that obviously points per game, Giannis wins that. Uh, rebounds per game, Giannis wins that. And let's talk about uh, field goal percentage, he wins that. But the asterisks, those three, you, that word for you, I told the asterisks right there are for things that are better from the MVP than last year's campaign. So the guys improved. We're talking about having this top scoring office. Highest net rating, top defense in the league, a better record than the Lakers. Only if you factor in age and star power do you even come up with some semblance of an argument for LeBron James. But if you look at it in terms of stri strictly production on the court and the effect on your team and the win-loss record, no question it's Giannis' MVP once again. See, this is the problem that I have with Magic's tweet. And this goes for LeBron's campaign, too. I'm all for LeBron James being the MVP right now. My inclination is to put him at the top of my ballot. But I'm not going to go statistics for the reason that Marcellus just demonstrated. If you go stats, 
Giannis kills him in that department. Don't go into this almost triple-double and don't lie and say he's a great defender. He's better this year than last year, but he's not better than Giannis. And the whole leadership thing in sports, excuse me, there's all kinds of guys, starting with Patrick Mahomes, that can have an argument that they are a better leader than LeBron James. Mm. But that said, when I look at a brand-new coach, I look at three new starters. I look at five new players. I look at how he has brought Anthony Davis and made him the best AD we've ever seen. LeBron James is the reason for all that, but it's the intangibles that he brings in bringing a team together and making it far, far better than the sum of its parts. That's why I would consider. And the second best record in all the league. (laughs) Lakers don't have the talent overall that the Milwaukee Bucks have, and yet they're only a couple games behind them overall in the standing. So when I look at that, that's the case that I make. But man, LeBron, if you really want to have people singing your praises, make sure they're, they're, they are, they got the right <laughs> fire book that they're working from. <laughs> exactly. Slick, Slick, that was so cute. Yeah, you tried. That was adorable. Hey, fair. LeBron fair. makes everybody better. The popcorn tastes better. Yay. The beer tastes better. Yay. Everybody's just better. Come on, Slick. I love LeBron. I love LeBron. But one thing I've learned from being on this set, Marcellus has taught me, he's ingrained into me, it's facts over. Feeling. Mm. Say it again. It's facts oh, over feelings, me Slicks. You're give me and, the, numbers and, the, facts. and the fact of the matter is, it's really not an argument. And I love LeBron, so that pains me to say, but I have to ride with my Nigerian brother, Giannis <laughs> Adetokumbo, okay? A real Nigerian last name. Whoa. Okay? Not the Greek freak. I'm riding with my Nigerian brother, it's Giannis, because when you look at it, Slick, Think about what Giannis did. Marcellus already gave you the stats, so I'm not going to go to those stats. But let me talk about this one, the most important one to me. Last year, the Greek Freak and the Milwaukee Bucks, their winning percentage is 73%. Mm. But this year, it's up to 82%. So when you talk about the fact that he won MVP last year and everything he did quite literally got better, if you're talking about the most valuable player, you should also look at the most valuable player on the most valuable or the best team Mm. and not only did Giannis get better everything he touched turned to gold and that team got better as well so while my emotions my heart my feelings they ride with Braun Braun they always have and they always will my mind it rides with Giannis Giannis. how how much do we credit the continuity of the Milwaukee Bucks over all the other teams that we've seen competing for that top spot. Because let's be realistic. We don't look across the board and and make this an MVP race. We always look at the top teams and select the best teams, uh, best players on those teams. And that's really the category in which we're working with when we talk about the best players. I look at Giannis's game and I look at what defines the ability to win. It's being able to close games. And while LeBron James is not the best closer in the game, he's certainly better than Giannis in that category. And to me, that's an element. It goes back to why James Harden was getting my vote uh, back in the day because over Giannis because of his ability to close, that ability to win games in the last two minutes. I don't know how you define that statistically. You certainly don't do it with the overall stats. That is the distinction that I make. That's what I hold as being so important. The other part, though, where I am with you on Giannis Mm. is the fact that he has said, this is not my main focus. I want to win a championship. And that's what really concerns me about LeBron and Magic and everybody campaigning for LeBron. You already have four of these. The thing that's going to (laughs) distinguish you in L.A. is if you win another championship with a third team, and that should be the focus. I don't even know why LeBron and the people around him are campaigning for it at this point when I thought he proved everything he needed to prove, at least individually. Well, I know why they're campaigning it. It's Lala. We always caught up in some hype. You know us in L.A., Hollywood, you got to... You got to be distracted to even be focused in L.A. That's what it sounds like right now. So it's crazy because I heard you in the early part of your argument say, LeBron has helped everyone glue this together to the second best record in the NBA. 
I wonder who has the first. I wonder who has the best record in the NBA. Oh, Milwaukee. And this is so funny from Frank Vogel, who goes on record and says, nobody impacts winning more so than LeBron James. How did that go last year before you got here, Frank Vogel? Uh, last year, we saw Giannis in the conference finals. We saw LeBron in Cancun. This year, they're still behind Milwaukee as the MVP has gotten even better, including improving his three-point shot. So when you look at last year's MVP voting, and that's really my starting point, my reference point, Giannis got 941 of the votes. LeBron got one. Did he close the gap? Did he surpass Giannis? Hell no. So this is not even an argument, and we're just trying to cook up something that's not there. I'm sorry. I didn't know that this was a two-pack. I didn't know that we were judging MVP this year on last year and this year. You keep bringing up LeBron <laughs> historically. You keep bringing up who he is. Last year in terms of who this year's MVP is. He's gotten better because the MVP from last year is still here, LeBron's and he's better. better. LeBron, LeBron has gotten better? Oh, okay. Right? But he's also regressed. Fewer points, more turn turnovers, fewer rebounds, and not even the highest scorer on his team. Slick Rick, your, your, your turn. Like I said, I'm not going statistics for this argument. I'm going where the Lakers were last year and where they are Body now. Who I credit the most for that, that would be the MVP. Look, I'm, I'm with you because if you rock with your emotions, your emotions and your heart, they will lead you oh, to LeBron. No. My emotions, <laughs> they have the led me to LeBron. Narrative. But Slick, Six, the yeah. logic, the logic will lead you to Giannis. Yes, Coming up, yes. Major League Baseball is about to be back right here on Fox. And you know Uncle Jimmy is excited. Mm. Hear what he has to say next. Speak for yourself. Oh, I love it. This week, Fox Saturday Baseball is back. The Cubs clash with the Brewers at one. Dodgers battle the Giants at four. And the Yankees face the World Series champion Nationals at seven. Celebrate the return of baseball with a special triple header Saturday. Only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Joined now by Uncle Jimmy. What up, Uncle, Uncle Jimmy? I know you're pumped. How excited are you for baseball to be back, brother? Hey, man, I am more excited than Ocho was when he got that unblocked phone call from Uncle. Okay. <laughs> man, let me tell y'all stuff, man. If I gotta watch one more episode of Law and Order and hear say, South Side is horrible. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, man. <laughs> and I ain't never missed sports so much in my life, man. Mm. And I don't miss sports so much, man. Me and my partners done started a fantasy cornhole league, man. Oh. I'm telling you, man, I need some real sh I need it in my life, and I need it in my life now. All right? <laughs> America and apple pie. That's what the hell we all need in our life right now. And some Baseball. cracker jacks, it looks like. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Oh, he's snagging on them Cracker Jacks, on? Yeah, yeah, you know you're old school if you got some Cracker Jacks. What was your prize, on? Don't you forget it. Hey, I'm going to need that speak for yourself jacket off you, bro. That's I'm sweet. coming for it after the show. You better get that group. Hey, Mookie Betts, 13 uh, years, 380 with the Dodgers. Baseball's back, y'all. See y'all tomorrow.